Today I'm going to show you how to prepare wild bird seed for mushroom cultivation. It's a very easy process. <clears throat> wild bird seed is one of the easiest grains to prep. It's also a very safe grain to use as far as contaminants are concerned. It's as simple as, you know, boiling water, bird seed, pressure cooker, jars, done. Uh, but we'll go through the step by steps and everything you need so that you can have healthy grain spawn and contam free tubs or shoe boxes. Okay, so to make your wild bird seed grain jars, you're gonna need a five gallon bucket, wild bird seed, mason jars, and a pressure cooker. <clears throat> You'll need a couple other things throughout the, throughout the way, but I'll show you those as we get to them. So for every full quart jar of bird seed, you can make two to two and a half uh, grain jars. So I'm gonna do three quarts, and I'm gonna make six or seven jars with it. Okay, so there's one. There's two. There's another half. Well, so the next thing you're gonna need is some boiling water. So you need enough boiling water to cover the wild bird seed that is now in the five gallon bucket. So I just fill this big pot up three fourths of the way. I don't measure it, just to make sure it's enough water to cover the wild bird seed. Okay, so pardon the dirty stove. Water's going, burner's on high. We'll put a lid on it so it boils a little quicker. We're gonna let this get to a rolling boil and we're gonna pour it on top of our wild bird seed. So now that we're at a rolling boil, we're gonna pour this water directly onto our wild bird seed. So now you get a nice wild bird seed steam facial. You know, good for the skin. All right, so from here you're gonna take, you know, you can use an aquarium net if it's metal or you can use one of these little metal strainers, doesn't really matter. You just need something and you're going to simply scoop out the sunflower seeds. Now, technically you don't really have to scoop them out. The problem is they can become mushy. The mycelium won't really colonize it very well. It's also black, so it just kind of looks funky. Um, kind of can look like contamination, but <clears throat> it's not a very good nutrient source for mycelium. Just kind of waste having it in there. And the goal is to get your jars to colonize as quickly as possible. So wild bird seed, while it may not be the best grain, you know, it's, it's a you know, constant debate, but it does work very well. It's very easy to get it perfectly sterile so that you don't have to worry about contamination in your mono tubs or your shoe boxes or whatever you're doing. So you can see that took me a couple of minutes or not even 45 seconds. I want to give it a stir and some a couple more will come to the surface. Then you just do the same thing and grab those. Now that all of our sunflower seeds are out of there, we're just going to pop a lid on this. We're going to let it sit for about two hours. So you can go as little as one hour. This is the, the soak step. You can't skip this. You can do one hour, but there's a possibility that if you have slow colonizing jars that could stall from not having enough water, not being hydrated well enough. I do two hours, never had a problem. You can go up to 10 hours without an issue. You just don't want to leave it for, you know, really more than 10 plus hours. Some of the stuff will start to get a little mushy and weird. So we're going to let this sit and then we'll come back. While we're waiting for the soak step to finish, I just want to show you your different wet options. So there's four that I use, they all work well. So the first is simply a plastic unmodified lid. Now when you pressure cook this and after, so when you pop in the pressure cooker, you just want to tighten it all the way and then back it off just a hair like that. That way it gets enough gas exchange. There's no issue with, you know, jars cracking or the lid breaking. Um, and you can actually loosen it quite a bit without issue. It won't become contaminated. Contams can't travel through abstract surfaces, so it couldn't, you know, climb up here, go through the threading and get inside. It's not really an issue. <clears throat> That's why these work. Um, and then the other option is to use a standard metal lid. And uh, typically you'd flip this 
so it doesn't suction itself closed. It's easier to get off. Same thing, tighten it, back it off a little bit. There you go, you can pressure coat just like that. The only issue with using metal lids is if you're doing grain to grain transfers, because there's multiple parts and they're kind of slippery, you know, you don't want to be touching the bottom of this because you'll contaminate your grain to grain jar, right? So you just have to be really careful doing grain to grain, which is why I prefer plastic lids. The next option is a plastic lid with a filter on it. So these filter discs are from Micropose, M-I-C-R-O-P-P-O-S-E. -P -P you just drill a quarter inch hole and then stick a filter on. This is the best option, in my opinion. You just tighten it all the way. Easy to use, simple. And you can do the exact same thing with metal lids. But again, you know, metal lids, two parts, they can be a pain in the ass to use. And eventually they'll, they'll rust pretty bad. So usually what I do is I use metal lids until they're rusted, then I swap them out for the plastic ones. So these are the little options that I would go with. Any of them work. I've done them all. Like, I mean, I've run 100 plus jars with unmodified metal and plastic lids, just slightly loosened. Never had an issue. So now our grain has been soaking for two hours. We're gonna take it and run it through a strainer. So if you need a big strainer, you can buy them from pretty much any Asian market. This is the smallest size they have, but you could fit a pretty good amount of grains in here, probably nine or 10 quart jars. They have ones that could fit literally like four entire five gallon buckets full if you needed that much. Dump it in here. So you notice there's still some sunflower seeds in here. So we're gonna rinse this after, and I'll actually pull out whatever sunflower seeds I can just while I'm rinsing it. It's not really a big deal, but you might as well get out what you can. When I'm rinsing, I like to use warm water and this nice little sprayer. We'll see you do. Pull out some of the sunflower seeds that I missed. Oh, okay. Takes me like five minutes. Five minute rinse, call it a day. Okay. So now, once you have it rinsed, all you're gonna do is let it sit for 30 minutes, so some of the water drains out, and then after that, we'll start loading our jars. So I'll see you then. Now we're gonna fill up our grain jars. So it's been 30 minutes. Um, basically, I just make sure there's no more water coming out the bottom of the strainer. That's how I know it's ready. A lot of times it'll be ready in you know 20 minutes. I do 30 just because. Um, so I think I'm gonna do grain to grain transfers on most of these jars. So what I'm gonna do is fill them up about 50% of the way. Because you gotta remember when you pressure cook these, they'll still expand, the grains will still expand a little more. So if you fill them up to 50%, they'll be, you know, 65, 70% full <clears throat> by the time they're done. And then you're gonna have to pour some grains in there so it'll fill it up a lot and you don't want it to be too full, otherwise you won't be able to shake your jars. If you're using liquid culture or you're dropping agar wedges in there, you can fill them up a little more. You know, you can fill them up to 60%, so 50%. And then once we have these full, we'll put them in our pressure cooker. Let's talk about the pressure cooker for a minute. Pretty simple. Uh, this isn't a pressure cooker video, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but essentially you're gonna load your jars in. Then when you fill it up with water, they're gonna be about halfway up the jars. Um, that way you don't lose too much water while you're pressure cooking. And uh, other than that, you should pretty much know how to run your pressure cooker. <clears throat> So now we're going to load up our grain jars um, into the pressure cooker. They're filled, they're all about ha halfway. So I decided I'm going to use all these for grain and grain, so I was actually able to fill nine jars, which is pretty much what my pressure cooker holds. So for the jars that have filter pads on them, you need to use tinfoil. Um, if you don't use tinfoil, they'll last about one or two pressure cook cycles before the filter pad falls off. Okay, so we have all of our jars tinfoiled except for one. You'll notice this jar has no filter pad on it. 
So I did this purposefully just to show you that a pressure cook's fine. You can do them like this if you want, unmodified. However, you just have to remember to unscrew it a little bit. You know, just tighten it and then give it a crack. That way it won't become pressurized in the pressure cooker. Um, and also, you, you don't need tinfoil on this. You can use tinfoil on the unmodified jars, but you don't need it. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to throw it in the pressure cooker and let it go. Now we have our jars in our pressure cooker. You probably can't see this, but the water line comes almost halfway up the jars. I'm gonna put two more on top so I can fit nine total. And then uh, we're gonna get going. Okay, pressure cooker's going, water's heating up. A lot of people let their water boil before they put the lid on. I find it's a waste of time. It doesn't really make a difference. <clears throat> so once it starts venting i let it vent for 10 minutes and then i pop the weight on here to, to start building pressure now you're going to want to pressure cook at 15 psi for 90 to 120 minutes you can do either 120s on the safe side um, but i do 90 minutes and it works fine for me so it's kind of up to you so the pressure cooker has been venting for 10 minutes now we're going to slap the weight on here and let the pressure build up to 15 psi um, once it's done pressure cooking, I turn the heat off and then I let it sit until it gets to zero and I let the pressure all the way, you know, go down. Um, this has been sitting for about an hour after pressure cooking is still hot as shit, but <clears throat> it is at least cool enough to open up. So we're going to open it up and take our jars out. All right. So this is what we've got. We're looking pretty good. Nine jars. Boom. Crispy. All right, so now what I do is I pull the jars out and I just take off the clean foil. Let me give them a nice shake to redistribute the moisture. There we go. So remember, I'm doing grain to grain with these. And I like to put a pretty good amount of grain in there so they colonize really quickly. So I have about an inch and a half of space. And all the jars look like this. So we're just going to pull them out and set them aside and let them cool. Okay, so you'll see this one jar has no tinfoil on it. This is the unmodified lid, but it, you know, it perfectly looks great. So what I do is I tighten the lid and then I shake in it. Tighten the lid, then I shake it, and then I loosen the lid just a hair again to let gas exchange occur. So you'll notice on most of these, they're still, right, like this, this jar was half full. It's only grown like less than half an inch, a little less than half an inch. But as they cool, the grains will expand a little more. So that's why we leave room. So some of these will end up happening about a quarter inch more than what they have in them right now. So just enough for grain to grain, right? And these were half full. So now I let these sit for 24 hours and then I inoculate them. You just need to make sure they're cool enough for the mycelium. Um, and even though, you know, if you only waited a few hours, this might be cool to the touch, but the grains could still be too hot inside. So I just let them sit. 24 hours, do them the next day, never had a problem. I've waited a week and it's been fine.